So now I can pick one or the other of those mole fractions and I can start making a graph. And that's really what I'm looking at here. So let's take a look at a graph of, let's say, amount of color. And let's do mole fraction of SSA. When I have no SSA, I have no purple color. So that'll work out to zero. But what happens as I increase the amount of SSA? Well, you can see that the color increases. We're going to be measuring color in a couple weeks, but let's just sort of qualitatively look at the amount of color. It increases and increases until about this sample. So if I plot those, after it gets past this one, Six, seven, the color fades away. The color decreases again. So let's plot those until I get to mole fractions always have to be between zero and one. What do I have? Well, hopefully by this time, this looks pretty familiar and you all know what the next step is, what do we have? I've got a trend where I'm increasing the amount of SSA and the color increases. I have another trend where I increase the amount of SSA and the color decreases. So what if I fit those two trends to some lines? This volume of S, this mole fraction of SSA is now the mole fraction where the most reaction occurs. This is the mole fraction where my two trends cross and where I've reacted the correct amount of both substances together. And if we look at this, we can probably take a little estimate that that looks like it's right around 0.67. SSA, what does that mean about the iron? That means that this must be 0.33 iron. Or 1 to 2. So for every one iron that reacts, I get two SSAs that react. And we don't even know what SSA is right now. But by observing some physical property of the solution that we're working with, we can determine the correct stoichiometry of the chemical reaction. So what are you going to do this week? Well, your experiment this week involves not SSA and color, but you're going to be looking at a different reaction. You're going to be looking at the reaction of bleach, which for our purposes is really a solution of hypochlorite ions. And thiosulfate line. We're not going to be generating any interesting colors this week, but we are going to be generating heat. So when these two react, one of the products of the reaction is heat. So how are we going to do this reaction? Well, it turns out that sometimes low tech works better than high tech. So your reaction vessel for this week 
is going to be a little styrofoam coffee cup. Because what? These foam cups are insulating. And since we want to measure temperature change and heat, we don't want to lose a lot of heat to the outside. So to stabilize these a little bit, not a bad idea to set them in a beaker. That helps stabilize them. That also helps if you happen to pop a hole in the cup, it'll contain the spill. Your probes for this week are temperature probes. Now, our conductivity probes last week were pretty rugged probes. The only probe that's more rugged is the temperature probe. So this, we don't even have to worry about calibrating, setup, or anything. When you open up the computer, you should be in good shape looking at, at the temperature probe. So that's the experiment. You're going to take different amounts of hypochlorite solution and thiosulfate solution, mix them together, and see how much heat comes out of that solution. And by looking at the amount of heat that's generated, you can determine how much reaction has occurred. And even though I bet none of us can write down the expected products of this reaction, by monitoring the heat that's produced by different mixtures, different combinations of these two, we'll be able to determine the stoichiometry. About the only thing to really keep an eye on in this experiment is the volume of water or the volume of solution that you end up using. Because we're measuring temperature, we're not directly measuring heat, we're measuring temperature of the solution, it's important that we keep the, volume of so the total volume of solution constant. So in all the different mixtures you do, make sure that your total volume of solution is 50 milliliters. Other than that, this experiment is pretty straightforward. So hopefully we'll all be able to get through without too much trouble and get some really interesting data to analyze. Good luck.